Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Today we're at the Club KO gym in Buckhurst, Dill Essex, and we're going to do some filming with Mickey Theo and we're going to have a little nosy about and see who's in there. We've just seen this gentleman getting out of this car, I believe that's Joe Cole in it, footballer. He went, all right geez. <laughs> I went, is that Joe Cole? <laughs> well, so we're going to go in there and do some filming with Mickey and uh, have a bit of fun today in Essex, so... All right, so keep watching. As you can see, they're all training hard here, here in the Club KO gym. I'm going to have a day off today, I just don't fancy it looking at these boys. This is the main man, Porky Channel, talks straight, no bollocks, the same as me. Gonna do it. Wait, this is for John Fury. <laughs> so I've not spoke to you, Mick, for a couple of weeks. How are you doing? Yeah, just having a quick shave, freshen up, just finished training. Yeah, you've been two sessions today, aren't you, Mick? Yeah. What have you been doing this morning? Uh, this morning I've done a bit of a uh, bit of hill sprints, a bit of running. Yeah, and um, obviously we've just seen what you've done this afternoon. Uh, well, late morning. Yeah, we had a little play round in the gym. Yeah. Are you just ticking over, Mick? Ticking over till I get the final uh, go ahead. Are we are we looking with venues and everything else, Mick? Platforms and that fight is it yeah, all going good? That's all coming together now. It's all going good. Finally, thanks. Well, that's all right, isn't it? John John Fury is he going to sign, Mick? That's what we want to know. Well, listen, we we can only do our best in this world. Um, I've challenged him. He's accepted it. Him being or saying he's the best fifty-four year old. So, listen, come out and prove it. That's all I've got to say to him. Yeah. Uh, John did make an offer to you, though, didn't he, to go up to Manchester one Sunday morning? Is that correct, Mick? That's correct, but he's made an offer because he had seminars booked with uh, Spencer Brown. He's trying to cover his tracks, basically, pulling all over people's eyes, saying that, you know, he's offered me out because he's only going to get questioned in it, you know, in the seminar. Why didn't you fight Mickey Fio? Yeah. And that's why he's done it. Yeah, uh, all right then. When we're looking at this fight happening, Mick, when would be best for you and him? You're obviously going to need a camp each, aren't you? Listen, I'm, I'll give him six to eight weeks, um, you know, on signing the contract um, and be fair and do it correctly in the ring, you know, proper judges and proper um, referees. John said uh, on the internet that he only, he's, uh, he only needs... 24 hours notice is good to go straight away so why give him an eight week camp because he's only going to improve isn't he yeah listen i don't mind listen, if he wants to do it sooner we can do it sooner it's not a problem i'm ready anyway yeah uh, all right then. anyway mick let's change subjects a little bit and we'll come back to uh john gypsy john fury the fighting man uh that don't fight uh tell us about your pal lenny mclean you've done used to do doors when you sparred with him didn't you how did you get to meet Lenny? Yeah, I, got, I went down to the Camden Palace where he worked, um, got a job there, and Lenny took me under his wing, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And what were he like? Yeah, he was a gentleman at the time, um, but very aggressive person. I see another side of him. Great guy. 
you sparred him, didn't you, Mick? What did that go like? Yeah, we got we got, sort of. There was a film going out about his life, and I I was going to play the, a part of a boxer, and I uh, put a bit of money into it back in the day, and I said, look, Len, I can have a row, but technically you need to show me a few moves. Yeah. So he says, come down to the gym one day, which I did. Showed me a few moves. On top of that, smashed my nose, broke my ribs, put me down. Oh, did me. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I learned the hard way. Yeah. Yeah, he likes to dish it out, did he, Lenny? He did, then we continued, you know, and I only got better, and, you know, it was good. At the end of the day, it was a good lesson for me. Do you see Otis Scott Welch nowadays? I don't see nothing of Scott anymore. Um, I'll try and keep in contact with him, but I don't really hear from him. But I hope he's well. Nice guy. Yeah. yeah. That gym today, uh, is it Club, K Club KO? Club KO, yeah. Club KO, that's a active, pretty active gym, that, isn't it? Yeah. It's a great place. Good fighters come down there. Yeah. What uh, what's this place called then? Where we're at now? Uh, this is uh, Italian il barbershop. I the Italian, Italian barbershop, yeah, in Il Bacco uh, restaurant, is it? Yes. Yeah, in yes. the back of it. Bocca still. Bocca still, the best place to be, the best barber. Thank you. Yeah. It's not a bad Italian restaurant as well, which we can test. No, we just have some great charge. food, yeah. Uh, Luigi, the owner, he's a great guy. Great restaurant, Restra great restaurant tour. But listen, wh where else can you go? Have a bit of food and chill out in a chair after and get shaved. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, have you, getting back to, to Theo versus Fury, have you had any thoughts about how many rounds it's going to be, Mick? And how many minutes around? Um, well, back in the day, I'd say six months ago, Spencer's talking about, I don't know, four twos. But then I changed it. I said, well, why do you want four twos? You're an ex pro, or your fighter's an ex pro. John Fury's an ex pro. I'm a nobody. He say he says he's fit. Let's do eight threes, ten threes. So I think they was a bit worried about that, a bit concerned about that. But um, listen, I'm flexible. What they want to do, I just want to get the fight on. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting fight. Have you thought about any uh, chief supports for it, John? John, who's John? Oh, sorry, uh, Mickey. <laughs> I mean, have you and chief John supports? thought? Yeah, in what respect with supports? Uh, chief support. Uh, what? What? If you're gonna fight John Fury, you're gonna have to have a chief support, and then probably another fight on, aren't you? There'll have to be at least three fights. Oh yeah, well, undercard. You mean? Sorry. Yeah, undercard. undercard yeah. yeah. Yeah, we'll we, we, we'll have to get it on the card. Yeah, it'd be probably about four or five fights on the undercard uh, towards our main event. Me and John. They're obviously, you, you're both gonna go into ring and that. John said uh, when it first were, well, it looked like it was gonna happen that, or did his manager say that? He's not going to fight for free. He's going to want paying. Is that? That's his first words. Right. John ain't fighting unless there's money on the table. So if there's money on the table, and you would then counter that way, there'll be a big donation to NHS. Why not a donation to uh, mental health as well? I think that's a good idea. Yeah, because John's a big advocate of that anti. Yeah, and isn't it? past Tarshan's gone through what he's gone. Yeah. He's a great advocate that you know what he went through to come out of it. Yeah. A champion on top of it. Great. Yeah. Big respect to Tyson. Nice guy. Yeah. And I do follow him. So you and John getting at it for and doing something for mental health would be good as well, wouldn't it? Perfect. You think? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. I'm up for it. Yeah, that'd be good. So John, if you're watching, and I know you are, something for mental health as well as at NHS as well. I think that's brilliant, John. You're obviously a charitable sort of guy. You always speak about mental health and how it needs to be in the public eye more and I agree with that for people that have got it so I think that that would be a good idea to donate some of the, the proceeds to mental health as well as the NHS uh, I think that's I think that's very good uh, have you thought about it being down as an unlicensed or an exhibition which do you think me because you're not going to get a license at your age front board it's a charity event at the end of the day yeah charity event yeah um, yeah that's what it's going to be a charity event for a good cause like you say the mental health and the NHS, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in good junction with that, yeah. All right then. Well, we'll come back to for this later on. Uh, what about the the scene at the moment, Mick, with the boxing? Did you watch the Billy Joe Saunders fight? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. What did you think? Um, yeah, I mean, listen, um, Murray's. I think he was retired. Come back out of retirement. He's, he's gone for his last bash, hoping to win it. Yeah. Um, Billy, yeah, fought well, but a little bit rusty. But listen, he's been out of the ring that year. And so, you know, all respects to him. He he done well to win, um, and he got he got the points at the end of the day. You think he needs to now be in a proper fight now, though, Bill? 
I think he wants a proper fight before this, um, but it was good to have this as a stepping stone yeah. before he moved further forward because he knows what to learn on and build on. Yeah. Um, he needs to sharpen up a bit more. Um, how he fought David Labou was amazing. That's how he needs to get back to that, that sort of um, condition and then move forward for the big one. Yeah. If he wants to go that way, which I think he does. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. What did you think to. Uh Tyson Fury's fight being cancelled against Caballel. We'll put this up a little bit. Yeah. We done, yeah? He, he didn't fight him, but he's yeah, really. so got legal, legal problems with yeah. Wilder. Do you see that going to court, Mick? Um, he's been out ring 10 months now and he hasn't got a date. Um, I, I don't know. Would, would it go to court? I think the Americans are trying to get it to court, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. All right, then. What did you think to Anthony Yard against Lyndon Arthur? Well, I think Anthony Yard was tested this time. Yeah. with a proper boxer yeah and it, it it separates the champions from the you know from the losers yeah so and the same with um uh, dubois you know he got uh, he he was in with there were a big a big unit a, a juggernaut yeah and it showed him as well you know when you step up to that level and that heaviness and the weight you're messing with different people different class so yeah yeah, all right then. And obviously, we can't finish off without speaking about Daniel Dubois. What do you think to that, man? Yeah, well, that's what I just said. He he was up against Joyce, and uh, he stepped up another pace. And listen, Daniel was going in. It's all right knocking journeyman out and moving forward. Yeah, but at the end of the day, um, you know, journeyman a journeyman, and they're put there to to build your record. It's just boxing. We know that. But when you you jump in straight in the, the lines then yeah this is what happens yeah and it was expected to happen a lot by having said that a lot of people wanted the, the bar to win um i did but joyce proved us all wrong at the end of the day yeah and uh it went his way and good luck to me he deserved it yeah um daniel taking a knee okay everyone's criticizing him, putting him down for it but listen, they're not in the ring. They're not taking the pain. They're not taking the punches. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to respect that. What he's done, he's done. Whether it's good or bad, you know, he can come again and uh, learn from his experience of going down on one foot. Not two next time, maybe. Yeah. But I don't blame him for what he's done. It, it, it's, it's his decision at the end of the day. And it's, it, it's a personal thing. Do you feel that a lot of the ex pros and current pros that were giving it to him on social media were a bit out of order saying he quit? I think so, yeah. Because, um, you know, they're not in the position he is at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, okay, let's say he didn't quit, you know, he could lose an eye for, for good, for, for, for life. But listen, at the moment, he's, he's well, I think he's, he's okay. Um, and he will come again. Yeah. If he's got the heart. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Moving on then, Mick. Callum Smith against Canelo. That's this month. Do you think that's a good fight and who wins? Canelo. Canelo, yeah. You're not giving Callum Smith a chance, mate. I'll give him a small chance, but I think um, Canelo will come out to trumps. Mm, I think Callum Smith's a good bet, mate. He just he's an attractive bet at the bookies, even though he's not going to get no favours with judges or ref. I think it's an attractive bet for anybody who wants to, you know, have a, have a cheeky, a cheeky yeah, bet on it. Listen, if the if the odds are good, I'll put on Callum as well. But <laughs> I think the winner is comes out of that is Canelo. Well, he's passed every test, hasn't he, so far? He's Callum passed everything. He's still beat. strong. In, he, he seems still to young. pack more size on, become a bit more rugged, more solid fighter. And, uh, yeah, he, he's, the, he's the one, I think, still there. He's, I know he's coming to the end of his career, but he's still got it. Uh, all right, then, well, we'll finish off with... Have you got any message to John Fury? Have you got a message for him? Uh, the only Mick? message I can come to John Fury is John Fury... I know you're going to be watching this. I'm here. We're waiting for you. But soon you'll get a contract to fill in. It'll be plastered all over our Manchester. And you will fight in the end. Otherwise, you know what you are. I've said it many times. I'm not going to repeat myself. You're letting everyone down, John. So come clean. Come out. Win or lose. At least be a man and fight me. That's all I've got to say to you, John. What about you and John on a face-off on Zoom, and then we we could we could sort so it. Out. Me and John, I'm up for anything with John, yeah. so it's not a problem. Listen, I'd love to get him on your channel. Yeah, you'd be the I questionnaire, could. and I'll know. be Johnny Nelson, and you two can be yeah, Tyson exactly. and Joshua. That, that's what people want to see, you know. 
John, uh, would you be willing to come on Porky's Corner and do a Zoom with Mickey and me, and I'll ask the questions and you can both answer, and uh, we'll, we'll sort it out then, and either we can arrange a time to fight, or we can say you don't want to fight, and I think, because it needs put into bed, Mick, doesn't it now? Definitely. We need to put it to bed. We're going on eight months now, aren't it? So it needs put into bed. So, all right then, Mick, have you anything, uh, sorry, John, uh, have you anything to add, Mick? No, just listen, we're waiting, you know, I'm ready to go. Um, yeah. And of course, you're shelling out for all these contracts drawn up and everything and all other stuff behind I'm the doing scenes. Doing everything. Mick, yeah, I'm going to have the, 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 the platform ready where we're going to fight, you know, a date. Um, listen, a date's down to him. If he wants to fight, if he's ready 24 for, four hours, I, I, can, I can do that as well. It's not a problem. So it's all on a plate for him. All he's got to do is turn up. So is that, that's about it then, I yeah? I wish I could do, do the same as what you say, <laughs> but I can't. We don't mean any harm, yeah. we're just having crack, aren't we? But John, come on, let's get this fight on. You're the fighting man that ain't fighting, John. Let's get it on. Well, I don't think he's a fighting man. That's the problem. John, you're not a fighting man. You're nowhere near a fighting man. All right, then. Well, I think that's it, yeah? Peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Pick up the phone, John. Let's sort it. Pick up the phone, John. day was had by all just on my way home now to from Essex back to South Yorkshire uh, really enjoyed it uh, thanks to the lads at Club KO that made us welcome Noel and Stan or Stam uh, and the other, the other people in the gym I think they were fantastic all a good bunch of lads and uh, I really enjoyed it uh, in that restaurant it's a pity I couldn't eat much I'll be on solids one day. But I enjoyed it. Mickey's got a bit of polish, as we say, where we live. He's got a bit of class. I like him. Uh, I'd like to see him fight John Fury. Uh, I don't think it's a lot to ask. Nobody's having a go at John Fury, so I want to get the point across in this video. Nobody's having a go at him, but he did say he was best man over 50. Mickey's put a challenge to him, so let's see it through. Let's see it through, and why not? Everybody else is doing these fights at that age, so why not let them fight it out? But John, you can't just go on social media and say, be up at Jimmy morning at Manchester. It don't work like that, does it? It don't work like that. So let's have the fight, John. I think you want to fight, John. I think you will fight. I don't think you're a bottle job or a chicken. I think you will fight, Mickey. It's just a case of when and where. So, but... Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this little episode that uh, we're going to get out. So, all right. So, everybody have a great weekend, and I'll speak to you soon. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. All right. Shout out to lads on Boxing Asylum and Terry and Rico and my close friend Frank Smith and his mate Dave. Peace out. Thank you.